Hey guys, are you still looking for a Windsor Daintree? Well, stay tuned because today we bring up to date all of our previous information on the Windsor Daintree and see if it is still up to scratch. Anyway, it's time to jump on board. Since our last video announcing the winner of our search for a new motorhome, we've had so many people reach out and ask, do we still recommend the Windsor Daintree? So I'm going to revisit two of our most popular vlogs as seen here and update their information for 2023. If you follow us or if you've seen some of our videos previously, I started making content covering the Daintree over two years ago as there was none around. We have been making travelling content for the last 18 months. We really love the Daintree. Its size, length, it makes it so manoeuvrable and the Renault drivetrain is smooth yet powerful. The electric raising bed provides a welcomely large living area with its six-seater dinette underneath. There's the thoughtful and well-used swivelling and reclining cabin seats, the large kitchen, and of course, its separate dry ensuite. Its decor is built around a modern colour palette and it has a very accessible Luton for storage. There's plenty of little useful touches, like the multiple USBs, the internal blinds, generous headroom, and externally, it has an included picnic table and an outdoor shower. The Daintree's bed lowers down to an accessible height where a ladder is not required, but for some, a portable step may be of help. The Daintree has a full width dry ensuite, and this means that the toilet is separate from the shower, keeping it dry. It also has a vanity with lots of storage and a huge mirror. It also has a solid sliding door for privacy as well. All these positives haven't changed since we first reviewed it. Now prices have risen across the board with all brands since we visited this decision and that affects the value equation. There's plenty of thoughts out there as to why Apollo has had a very consistent and sizable price rise from trying to slow down the orders or covering the increase in costs or just plain greed. How you view the value here is personal choice. But you can't deny, with Apollo increasing the prices across their ranges, that there is some sticker shock. Back in 2021, the difference between a similarly specced Daintree and a Jayco Conquest RM 20.5 was only $1,600. Today, the difference is closer to $45,000. Yes, you heard that right, and that's a lot of money. It should be noted here that both of these motorhomes are incredibly close. Habitat size wise, they only differ in millimetres. They both sit on the same Renault Master chassis, which although built in France, the 2.3 litre diesel engine is a tweaked version of what you'd find under the bonnet of your Nissan Navara Ute. Renault has had an alliance with Nissan for some years and since the late 90s, the second generation Master has been sold as a Nissan. It was also sold as an Opel Vauxhall Movano until 21 in some markets. So even though it's European, it's got some widely used parts underneath, meaning you don't necessarily need a specialist to keep it running well. The base Renault Master had a model year update in 2020, and both RV manufacturers introduced this as soon as they could get their hands on the updated stock. Both of these RVs have seen some specification adjustments, mainly due to component availability throughout the COVID impact. So let's explore that. On the outside, visually, apart from the chassis facelift, the Daintree has not changed. On the inside, it still has a four burner stove, a grill, a bigger fridge, bigger panoramic windows with classy LED lighting. It has an ambiance of a modern apartment, but the freshwater tank has shrunk from the original 110 litres down to 96 only. The solar panel is currently rated at 180 watts. Now that's bigger than the initial 120, but it's consistently fluctuated in specification, causing a lot of headaches. 
The kitchen saw its biggest visual change in late 22 because of gas compliance regulations. Thicker bench tops were introduced and it lost the full width bench top as the stove grill was moved up and because of this it scored an extra pot draw. And the King Jack antenna was updated to an omnidirectional Malenko 900L antenna. Whereas the Jayco originally started as part of the Freedom range. With its four different floor plans back around 2016. But sometime in 2019 they decided to reduce the models down to just the one floor plan and bring it into the Conquest family. It was rebranded, the decals were updated at the time as well. So please leave a comment below if you know any more than this. But from there, they were introduced in tw the 2020 chassis update. They changed the decals around again, and somewhere along the way, they removed the swivel cabin seats to provide the now standard side airbags. Then sometime in 22, they reprofiled the Luton, making it less bulbous and more streamlined, which may reduce some of the storage volume just a little bit. It also gained a larger 120 litre fresh water tank up from the previous 80 litres. A solar panel has increased from 120 to 200 watts. With the RV market running still hot, although waiting times have been reduced of late, if you can afford and want to order a brand new motorhome, the wait on these has come down to around nine months, which is similar to our wait back in 2021 when we made the original decision. Now I touched on prices earlier and it can be said that price rises can be attributed to demand, popularity or availability. So here I've indicated the original introduction price of each model, the price back in 21 when we made our original decision and the now current RRP as of August 23. Now $45,000 is a lot of money and it would buy a lot of optional extras or provide money for a lot of travelling. Now the Jayco is better spec than the Daintree, but the bed still requires a ladder to access it. It still only has a two burner stove and no grill, but over 18 months, we used our barbecue enough that this becomes less of an issue. Now the ensuite in the Jayco still has a less private concertina door, still plenty of wood grain laminate, but don't forget, it can carry an extra 245 kilos of payload as it's lighter than a Daintree. Now this current price point opens up different options that we couldn't even dream of comparing against last time. Even some of the models are bigger and carry more people if you're willing to look at different layouts. We revisit the Sunliner Pinto as an option. It is a further $10,000 dearer than the Daintree, but we feel the difference is well covered by the included diesel heater, the electric awning, big 150 litre fresh water tank, nicer fabrics and decor, and the 412 model even has an included vertical external locker. Back in 21, the difference from a Daintree to the Pinto was $45,000 in favour of the Daintree. How times have changed. So there we are. The Daintree is a great motorhome. It's a great size, and the majority of the reasons why we originally chose it are still there but specifications have changed slightly and the value equation now favours the Jayco even more. It really does depend on what you want. And if you're curious about the entry Jayco Conquest, we ask you to pop on over and take a look at the YouTube channel, Tropical Zoom. Dennis gets about and has some great vlogs with beautiful coastal scenery. It's worthwhile seeing how he uses his RM 20.5. I'll leave a link below in the description. And if you're after an entry motor home, a Daintree is a great RV. It's easy to drive, maneuverable, inside it's like a modern apartment, almost TARDIS-like. The Jayco needs a ladder to get into bed, but it's better specced and much cheaper. We loved ours and we would not have changed our decision. Value is just like beauty. It's in the eye of the beholder. But if we were newbies starting off in 2023, it may be a different story. We'd more than likely save the money and we'd probably take the Jayco. A lightly used second-hand model might be an easier way to get into a Daintree and it should have had any of the production niggles fixed and may offer some much needed optional extras at a more suitable price. It's only a call you can make as the prospective owner. 
Hopefully this information helps you make that decision and soon we'll be seeing you next time out on the road. See you later.